very much for that reminder that everything God does is amazing. Because we don't deserve and we can't deserve what it does for us. He does it anyway. I'd like to recognize my area coordinator, the audience and the holidays. It's nice to have him with us. The final verses of our scripture reading read, And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you found him, when you found him, bring back word to me, that I may come and worship him also. I've entitled the message, as you've seen in the program, Insincerity is for strategy. Let's pray. Father, guide my thoughts and aid us as we seek to pay attention, to retain that which we hear, and to find application of daily living for Christ's sake. Amen. These major wise men or kings, whatever you choose to call them, depending on what version you are reading. They went searching for the young child Jesus with Herod's approval. To this extent, they were Herod's envoys. Anyone who hindered them Anyone who obstructed their search, interfered with their journey, would be accountable to King Herod. They left home of their own volition, following the star seeking the king. But now they went with Herod's approval, Herod's blessing. Go search carefully for the young child. King Herod was being insincere. He was not expressing genuine feeling. Herod deliberately concealed his true intent from the major. Herod had no intention of worshiping the infant Jesus. His was an evil strategy. He had in mind a wicked objective. But Herod forgot something very important. We cannot hide from God. We can hide from one another. Husbands may even hide from wives and wives from husbands. Children from parents. Brothers and sisters from one another. Experience has taught me you can't hide from all the people all the time. You may succeed some of the time. That was a lesson Herod was to learn. Let me illustrate. Years ago, back in the 50s when I was in school, called the government school. Some of the boys were pretty mischievous, the girls too. They would take chalk and write around the toilets what we call naughty words, vulgar expression. That was a no no as far as the headmaster was concerned. And if you got caught or you could get identified, you're going to pay. He had a piece of leather about that long, a little bit thick and about so wide. One end was shaped with a little handle. And he would enjoy just putting your clothes together so they sit tight across your rump. 
and you'll be anointed to the extent that you will shed tears. That's if you get caught. But if you didn't get caught, he would express his frustration and his objection to what you had done by writing the neat handwriting under what you had written. The words from Genesis 16, 13. Thou God seest me. Thou God seest me. Those words were uttered by Hagar. He was letting the perpetrator know, I don't know who you are. No one will identify who you are, but God sees you. Sometimes he had more space. He would write words from in Proverbs 15 verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Two things in our narrative tells us that Herod was concealing and misrepresenting his true intent. One, the Magi were warned, divinely warned, by an angel. Matthew 2 verse 12, then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to heaven, they departed to their own country another way. God knew what Herod intended, and God warned the Magi, don't report to him, go back home a different way. We also know from Herod's response, when he realized that the wise men were not coming, that he intended evil. Matthew 2 verse 15, then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry. And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. So we know Herod intended evil. How many children were killed, we don't know. But historians and archaeologists tell us that Bethlehem at this time was not a very large village. And the number of babies around within the category, the age group he was looking for, would have been a vast number. So possibly between 6 and 20, possibly 25 babies were killed. The dictionary defines the action of concealing and misrepresenting truth as deceit. Deceit is a characteristic of fallen human nature. Scripture gives us many examples of deceitful conduct. In Genesis we have Cain. God asked him, where is Abel your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? In other words, I don't know. Why are you asking me? But he was trying to deceive God because he had killed his brother and his brother's blood was crying out from the ground to God. And God told him so. Abraham plotted with Sarah to deceive Pharaoh and later on to deceive Abimelech. She's not my wife. She's my sister. He did this because he was fearful. She's good looking. I will trust these people. They might kill me and take my wife. 
So to say you are my sister, and everything will be well. God had to step in and save his skin. Insincerity, deceit, is very poor strategy. They tried on Isaac, playing the same game, trying to deceive Abimelech. Consider the identity of his wife. She's not my wife, she's my sister. Jacob later on, with his mother's urging, deceived his father Isaac, covered himself with skin of animal, took food into his father, and got the birthright blessing. He had said to his mother, I shouldn't do this. I'll be sinning against God. But his mother said, let your sin be on me. It is very sad when parents are urging their children into deceitful and insincere behavior. It insults God. It is not according to Proverbs, training up our children in the way they ought to go. In fact, if you observe the pattern, Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob, and later on, Jacob's own children, deceiving the Shechemites. If you become circumcised, then you can have our daughters, we can have your daughters, we can exchange in marriage. And when the Shechemites, three days were a bit tender and in pain, the fell in the city and slaughtered all the men. A streak of deception, a mile wide, running through from Abraham to Isaac, Jacob, and then down through Jacob's children. And later on, you'll find them banding together, conniving, and selling Joseph to the Ishmaelites and down into Egypt as a slave. But for the grace of God, but for the grace of God, we will suffer great harm from the deceit, the insincerity we perpetrate. Thank God for His grace. We could talk about Laban, we could talk about Pharaoh, the Gibeonites. But this seat wasn't confined to Bible time. Insincerity, the concealment and misrepresentation of truth is very prevalent in our day. TV consumer affairs programs like Watchdog, Road Traders, Fake Britain, Food Inspectors, Don't Get Done, Get Down, You've been scammed, cowboy builders, saints and scrunchers, all these consumer affairs programs constantly remind us that deceit is widespread in our day too. The bank libel rigging scandal, the PPI scandal, the BMW carbon emission rigging. All these remind us that we must be on our guard because trust has broken down, 
This shit is right. We got to watch ourselves lest we fall into the same category. Do you pull a sickie from home when you want to have time to do your own thing? That's the shit. Do you shortchange God on your tithes and offering? That's the shit. Do you prove unfaithful to your contract commitments? Deliberately so? That's the sin. Do you renege on your marriage covenant? That's the sin. And it's pretty right. In the church, in the community, in our business world, and especially so in our consumer affairs world. Prevalent as it is, we must be aware that when caught, perpetrators are fine. Ask the bank. And the figures that they get fined are mind-boggling, eye-watering. Work all my life, I couldn't earn that kind of money. But for many of them, it's a price worth paying for the temporary gains that they get. And yet, the Bible does say, Whatever man sweat, that shall he also reap. This is is totally contrary to the nature and the purposes of God. The gospel is grounded in the complete truthfulness and the trustworthiness of God. Sin is based upon self-deception. In Titus 1, 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul writing to his young protege, Titus, a young minister in the gospel, in his salutation, addressed him like this, Paul, a bond servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth, which accords with godliness in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. This is contrary to the nature of God. John 16, 13, New King James Version. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. It cannot practice to be seen. First Peter 2 verse 2 confirms the prophecy that was given back in Isaiah 59 and verse 53 and verse 9. In Isaiah 53 verse 9 is prophesied of Jesus, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence. Nor was any deceit in his mouth. Clinton's what it says, no guy in his mouth. And 1 Peter confirms when it says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22, that Jesus committed no sin. Nor was any deceit found in his mouth. God what do we call the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? 
you see, it's contrary to his nature. Not only that, God cannot be deceived. God cannot be deceived. David knew from experience you can't pull the wood over God's eye. You can't deceive God. When he thought he had every angle covered, God sent Nathan to tell him a story. And when David became irate and expressed his anger, Nathan said, It's you. Thou art the man. You can't deceive God and you can't hide from God. When David was speaking to Solomon, commanding him to go build the temple. In 1 Chronicles 28, verse 9, he said, As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he'll be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. God understands all the intent of our thoughts. Before we speak them, I express them. He understands what's going on in there. Can't pull the wood over God's eye. Even though you may pull the wood over your brother and your sister's eye. Psalms 139 is explicit. The whole psalm is worth reading again and again. To have a whole the story, the point. I just read verse one and two. O oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. <coughs> I'm an asset of fire. They thought that they could pull all over God's eye. When all the believers were selling what they had and putting all into one pot, they thought, we make a contribution. That's our plot of land. We are going to convert it to cash and give the cash to the common pot. Brother, be careful. When you have giving something to God. It's no longer yours to control. If you have given it to God, don't give the strings attached. I give but only if. When you give it to God, it's holy God's. When you make a pledge, the Bible says, when you make a vow, defer not to pay for God has no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. When they saw the returns from what they had covenanted to God, they thought, it's a bit much. Let's keep back some. After all, it's quite a lot we're giving anyway. The problem wasn't the amount. God would convert stones to gold. That's not a problem. The problem was their honesty and the deception being perpetrated. That's the problem. Not the amount of the money, but the nature of the heart. Is this all? This is all. Book the job down there. Wife came in later on. The Peter asked, tell me, did you already have been everything? Yes, we did. Why have you conspired against God to tell lies? You can't deceive God. Book should drop down there. The 
the Yazidis, sorry, first Corinthians 4, verse 5. We have these lovely words. Therefore judge nothing before the time, says the Apostle Paul to the Corinthian church, until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. You can't deceive God. That's the point I'm trying to make. You can't deceive God. Ecclesiastes 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 you know this one. Let's hear the content of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or whether evil. God, deceit is contrary to God's nature. And we can't deceive God. But deceit is Satan's modus operandi. His mode of behaving. John 8, 43, 44. Christ is making his defense. Ask the folks, why do you not understand my speech? And he answered it. Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father, if you want to do. He was a mother from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks, when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. The story of the fall in the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3, 1 and 4, is a story about the sea. The coming Antichrist, the Bible says, will portray the sea. For many deceivers, we are told in 2 John verse 7, for many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and the Antichrist. This is a deceiver and the Antichrist. So as elders and as pastors, we got to guard the pulpit. We got to watch carefully who present themselves and want access to the pulpit. We got to check them out because many deceivers are gone forth. When we have a speech about people having itching ears, it's happening life, left, right, and center today. An angle to perpetrate, his own deceit to present as his ministry. So these days you go on the internet, you'll find ministries ad infinitum. <coughs> Which denomination they belong to? Don't know. It's so and so ministry. It's so and so ministry. Jesus sent us out to make disciples to himself, not to ourselves. And we're involved in the ministry of Jesus Christ, not our own ministry. But folks who are itching ears are following the same deceivers left, right, and center because the Lord sound good. That's in accord with the word of God. Be careful of deceivers. Matthew 24, 23, 24 says, And if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ. Or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, 
if possible, even elect. If possible, even the elect. God know what you believe. Satan revels in deceit. False Christs, the Antichrist revel in deceit, and false prophets and teachers revel in deception. Here is from 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 11, 13-15. For such a false apostle, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers are to transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. No wonder Christ said, not all who say unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Not all who say, Lord, Lord. Because when they're lording with their mouth, like Herod, bring me water and come and worship him. But in their hearts, they're insincere and deceitful. We have been studying Jeremiah this past Quality. And you will see numerous instances of the deceit perpetrated by the so-called shepherds of the day. You will hear many of God identify the people of presenting deceit. I'll just choose one. Jeremiah 14, 13, 24. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold the prophets said to them, you shall not see the sword, nor shall you have famine, but I give you a short peace in this place. And the Lord said to me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them, commanded them, nor spoken to them. They prophesy to you a false vision divination, a worthless thing, and the deceit of their hearts. Brethren, deceit is right. In the financial business, be vigilant. On the internet, be vigilant. You are bright people, but Satan's had many years of practice. Listen to the use this week. Not spot professor. Feeling a bit lonely. Use a dating site recommended her. Met a gentleman. And over a period of time, they got emotionally close. By the end, she was scammed of 120,000 pounds. She said, I always thought, how could folks get scammed like this? That would never happen to me. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. Thank God for His grace. If we stay close to God, we revel in His truth. His truth keeps us free. If we wander away from God, and trust our own understanding because we see a quick advantage. Please know that insincerity, deceit, is a poor strategy. Trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. Our hymn expressed the true sentiments of our heart. We will not be deceitful. Come to our heart. There is room in our heart for you. May the grace of our 
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with us all, now and forever. Amen.